Hey everyone. So um, I'm going to try and use uh, my regular streaming software for uploading my videos in, in the future. Uh, so welcome to the IBE Konguru. This is a paper one part B essay uh, about interventionist supply side policies and how successful these policies are in achieving the goals of um, economic growth, low unemployment and um, low and stable rate of inflation. Now, before I continue, I want you to check out the links in the video description below. You'll find the link to the article um, that I derived the uh, RWE real world example used in this essay from, because this is a paper one part B. You'll also find some links to help you support the channel. If you want to become a member, access exclusive content. If you want to buy me a coffee, uh, the link to my TikTok and Instagram as well. Several ways you can support. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, become a subscriber if you haven't already. Become a member if you haven't already, and I hope you enjoy this question. So let's get started. So the question is, using real-world examples, evaluate the extent to which interventionist supply-side policies can increase economic growth, attain low unemployment, and achieve a sustainable low rate of inflation. Now remember, it's a 15-mark question from paper one, so you should aim to write this essay by hand in 45 minutes. And as I said, the real world example is an article from Reuters that's linked below in the video description. So let's get started. Let's see if we can answer the question. So how did I start my essay? I said, in order to address the demands of this question, a specific key term needs to be defined. Interventionist supply side policies, and then I wrote between parentheses, SSPs. This signals to the examiner that in the future, throughout the essay, when I write SSPs, I am referring to supply-side policies, are a set of policies aiming to increase an economy's productive capacity by relying on a greater role for the government. These include expenditures on infrastructure, education, healthcare, research and development, and all industrial policies. Interventionist SSPs can help in achieving long-term economic growth while also creating jobs and lowering the unemployment rate as well as lowering the inflation rate. However, they can be expensive and entail a very high opportunity cost. So you can see in my introduction paragraph, I defined interventionist SSPs. You don't need to define every, you don't need to define every single key term. Okay, you don't need to define economic growth, inflation, unemployment, because then you're just gonna spend your whole time defining key terms, right? And then I quickly established my main argument, right? I said they can be helpful in achieving so and so and so but however the counter argument and then i quickly started with my real world example okay i know in previous videos i tell you to draw the diagram first and explain the theory but i decided to put my real world example first to show you an alternative approach i put my real world example linked my diagram to that real world example and then evaluated so a real world example of an interventionist SSB is the Biden administration's $1 trillion infrastructure bill that was signed into law in November 2021. You might be thinking, wow, am I supposed to remember all of this? You don't have to give that much detail, but you should read the news articles and you should kind of know the names of specific laws or bills, um, even in your local region or the country that you're in. So I live in the United States. Um, so I follow a lot of news and I know things that are happening and then I'm like, okay, well, I can use this in my class when I teach supply side policies or infrastructure or whatever, okay? This measure is designed to create jobs across the country by dispersing billions of dollars to state and local governments to fix crumbling bridges and roads and by expanding broadband internet access to millions of Americans. Obviously, because I have the article and I typed this up, I copied this quote. You don't have to memorize quotes for your exam, but just... No, you want to give as much context as you can for the real world example. Remember, just mentioning the name of a country doesn't constitute a real world example. Okay, here I gave a year. I said November 2021. I gave a little bit more detail according to a Reuters news article from November 15, 2021. So I established the context. These are the parameters within which my um, analysis and evaluation will lie. This infrastructure bill is an example of both expansionary fiscal policy and interventionist supply side policy. Therefore, it will have the effect of increasing aggregate demand, AD, in the short run, which constitutes short-term economic growth, as well as increasing long-run aggregate supply, LRAS, in the long run, and thus creating a new short-run aggregate supply curve in the long run. 
This constitutes long-term economic growth. As shown in the diagram below, the AD curve shifts to the right in the short run, SR, from AD1 to AD2, and both the LRS curve and SRS curve shift to the right in the long run, LR, from LRS1 to LRS2, and SRAS1 to SRS2, respectively. Now, you can see all of these labels and these um, shifts from AD1 to AD2, LRAS1 to LRAS2, SRAS1 to SRAS2 match my diagram. So this is what I mean by use the labels in the diagram in the essay so that they match, okay? In the short run, the increase in AD from AD1 to AD2, there we go, AD1 to AD2, will create some demand pull inflation and lower cyclical unemployment while also achieving short-term economic growth. However, in the long run, and assuming the expansion of LRAS and SRAS outweighs the increase in AD, the average price level should fall from APL1 to APL2 to either offset the demand pull inflation created in the short run or at least lower inflationary pressures on the economy altogether. This is due to the increased efficiency of the economy and its product, increased productive capacity, which lowers costs of production for the business sector. The increase in potential output, full employment level of output YFE, from YFE1 to YFE2, again, using the same labels in the diagram, represents long-term economic growth, which is also accompanied by a decrease in natural unemployment, which is a combination of structural, seasonal, and frictional. Therefore, in the long run, this infrastructure bill, as an example of an interventionist SSP, should lower inflationary pressures on the economy, as well as achieve long-term economic growth and lower unemployment, at least in theory. So you saw here, I gave the real-world example, gave my diagram, explained the diagram, and answered the question. And then I set myself up for evaluation. However, here I'm beginning to evaluate in the context or within the parameters of my real-world example. However, in practice, there are several things that should be taken into consideration. Firstly, the initial increase in AD caused by the increase in government expenditure could outweigh the final increase in aggregate supply and thus could end up creating more inflationary pressures on the U.S. economy. Secondly, while spending $1 trillion to upgrade infrastructure will generate positive externalities of production, it will also add a huge amount to the government's national debt and comes at a very high opportunity cost. This growth in national debt could prompt, notice I'm using words like could and should, right? Suggestive language rather than definitive language. This growth in national debt could prompt more austerity measures in the long run and an adoption of contractionary fiscal policies which will be detrimental to achieving the goals of economic growth and low unemployment. Thirdly, interventionist supply-side policies involve very long time lags between the implementation of a policy and seeing its impacts. And so much can change during that time period that might prompt policies that will dampen those long-term positive effects. Nevertheless, interventionist supply-side policies like this infrastructure bill will have the advantage of offering direct support to sectors that are important for growth, like infrastructure services. While market-based SSPs can be a less costly alternative and place a lower burden on the government budget, they tend to create equity issues and can sometimes have a negative environmental impact. So you'll see with my evaluation, first I talked about the assumptions that I'm making. Um, when I analyzed the diagram, I assumed that the expansion of aggregate supply will outweigh the increase in aggregate demand. But here I am challenging that assumption. This is my first um, argument or counter argument in evaluation. Okay. Then I said, yes, upgrading infrastructure generates positive externalities, but it will add to the national debt. And adding to the national debt in the long run could actually prompt austerity measures and contractionary fiscal policy to be able to pay back that debt. So that might dampen the effects. Also, supply side policies in general have very long time lags between implementing the policy and actually seeing the desired result. So that's something we need to think about. And then what I did is I said, interventionist supply side policies have this advantage, which is offering direct support. Um, and then I contrasted them. I don't need to expand too much on market-based supply-side policies, but I used market-based SSPs as a sort of counter-argument. 
I said market-based SSPs can be a less costly alternative, and they place a lower burden on the government budget, but there are equity and environmental issues. Okay, so that's how I constructed my evaluation. To conclude, interventionist, uh, to conclude, interventionist SSPs like this $1 trillion infrastructure bill should, again, should, suggestive language, should help in increasing short-term and long-term economic growth while attaining low unemployment and achieving a sustainable low rate of inflation. But they also come at a very high opportunity cost and place a very high burden on the government budget and involve very long time lags. I wrapped up, I summarized without sounding too repetitive or maybe sounding a little bit repetitive. But my point is I came back to the question and I made sure I addressed the demands of the question. Let me know what you think of this essay. Um, let me know how you feel about uh, the way I constructed it. I know I shifted things around a little bit, but this is to show you that there is flexibility, by the way, as long as you address all the demands of the assessment criteria. You'll see that I explained economic theory effectively. You see that I evaluated, I gave a very detailed, solid real world example. I drew a diagram, I labeled it correctly, and I made sure I explained it fully. I explained every single label in the diagram in my essay. I didn't just draw the diagram for decoration. So these are all things you can think about. Now, in terms of the real world example, do you need as much detail as I gave? You don't. However, think of answering the basic questions like who, what, when, where, why, and how, right? Your real world example should be solid, right? It should be contextualized in time, in place, if there are clear individuals or people that you can mention, then you can. If there aren't, it doesn't matter. But just give as much context as you can. You don't have to go memorizing news articles. That's obviously crazy. Okay? So once again, using real-world examples, evaluate the extent to which interventionist supply-side policies can increase economic growth, attain low unemployment, and achieve a sustainable low rate of inflation. Let me know what you think. Like, share, comment, subscribe, leave comments below. I reply to all my comments. Look at the video description. You can find links to the real world example and ways you can support the channel and have a great